Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are taxed with getting rid of these dents. And by getting rid of those dents, we are going to replace this piece of channel here. On this particular machine, this is still factory. I can tell that by the welds or factory welds. This is a factory weld and the way it's boxed in on the back side is still factory. The same thing with this side. We've got some dents. This is all factory as well. This one I've done before and they pushed it in here and these whole, all these pieces were replaced when I did it before. And then this one, got a nice, nice dent there. And again, this is one that I did before. Did this piece, this piece to somewhere back in here. I don't know. I, it's hard to tell where you blend it. Um, basically you just cut the welds off and just slowly cut away at this until you get it all out and the back sides can't see right here we have to drop this um, belly pan there's air tanks underneath here but you could see like on this one you can see it's boxed in Okay, well, we're gonna start on this one. All right, that concludes all the cutting and gouging. You can kind of see they have a, this piece is kind of like a cast, or not a cast, a forged piece. Yeah, you know, it's got like this lip here, and that channel kind of sits in that. So we're gonna get this all cleaned up. We're gonna wire wheel it, we're gonna grind it. We're gonna clean this edge up. Then we're gonna clean this edge up. You can kind of see I purposely cut this right on that the tip of that, right where it bends. So now I will use a piece of wire and I will get that angle and um, we'll cut the new channel down. We have some channel here that was bent 
for me. Um, we took a sample. These bumpers do vary by machine to machine. I've seen, you know, an eighth inch or so difference. And it's kind of a pain in the butt when you're trying to, you know, do it right here and it's going to stick an eighth of an inch low. Not a, not a whole lot you can do. But we, we bend a whole bunch of these at one time. That way we have them. The material I use for this is P&O, so there's no mill scale on it. Uh, mill scale, if you don't know, it's like a, uh, it's like a, a, the flaky crust on the metal that builds up when they, when they produce the steel. And it can be very difficult to blend um, your seams together and with the mill scale on there. So I just, I get P&O, which stands for pickled and oiled. I believe they put it in vinegar and then they oil it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. So we're gonna get our measurement, use the wire to set our angle and we'll cut that piece, slide her in there. All right, I got it, got it grinded, got it cleaned up. And then I marked out, um, this one being factory, I marked out where the factory stitch welds were because they're nice and even. If someone had done this aftermarket and the stitch welds weren't even, then I would mark these out so that they're all perfectly even.
All right, we have our piece cut. I'll take it over there and see if it fits. Okay, we have that in position. We're gonna go ahead and get it, everything tacked together. We're using the Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC, powering it off of the Big Blue 600 air pack. Um, just using regular, regular ER70S6 wire, 7525 gas, 75% argon, 25% CO2, 035, 0.035 wire size. Bernard MIG gun, or Bernard gun, Bernard is my favorite. All the factory Miller guns, the tweaker guns and all that, I've drug them through the dirt and they don't seem to last more than a couple months and the triggers get have issues or whatever, these Bernards for some reason, I can drag these through the dirt and I, I've never had an issue. Anyways, so we're gonna, it's not quite square or it's not quite even. So we're gonna start where it is even right here and then we'll just we'll pull this out and just tack it and kind of just massage it into place so where everything lines up and fits perfect. All right, we've got the outside all welded out. We did a uh, uphill hardwire weld there because we're gonna leave that weld exposed because factory, you, it kind of has a weld. It's usually more prominent than that, but usually there's a factory weld left right here and while we're talking about that, you can see that serial number that's kind of below that paint there. That means that this piece is factory. This has never been changed. That serial number matches 
It's on the other side. Matches the serial number on the frame. So, I know for a fact that side has never ever been changed. But we'll just kind of hit that with the grinder, put it like a flat top on it, and it will, with some paint on there, it'll be really close. All right, now we're gonna start, um, we're gonna put the piece on the back side. <clears throat> flat piece, kind of just kind of box that in. So we got it marked out here. Um, these are cut to fit right inside that channel already. So we'll cut this, set it in there, and get that welded out. See my fit here. Now we we'll just uh, weld it out. All right, got it all welded out. Now let's blend out the front side. And for blending this, we're gonna start with the 3M Cubitron 36 grit, and then we'll gradually um, get finer and finer. All right, got her all blended pretty good, I think. <laughs> There's a few, a few things. It's kind of, you know, like this was in the metal. That was probably on the press brake die. Couple other maybe little things, and you know, like the little stuff on the piece that was already there. It's just like doing anything. It's like, where do you like really stop? I feel like this is a pretty good spot. It's not perfect, it's not like um, something you'd prep your car for for paint, but it's it's pretty dang close, especially just for something that's gonna get rammed again. So, um, we're gonna paint it and. Um, it'll look, it'll look great. All right, let's get some paint on there. Well, here you go. Wouldn't say it's perfect, but 
for this application. I think it's perfect. So I was gonna end the video here, but I'm gonna do this side tomorrow. And this side's gonna be three pieces. So it'll be this whole piece, this piece, and another piece here. And then we'll blend it in, I don't know, somewhere in here. And we'll have to take the skid plate off, get the air tanks out of the way. Cause we gotta get rid of these dents right here. So I think it'll be a little more interesting if I show all three pieces getting done and then the final uh, final result of that. Um, may not show every step by step on that one, but I will, I'll bring you along, kind of show you a little bit. All right, there's a almost California sunset. All right, it's the next day. She made it overnight. We had one one bug in there. All right, let's uh, get started on this side. Forgot my tripod yesterday, so hopefully today will be a little better angles. Um, so we're gonna cut this out. And we're gonna replace this whole piece. But like I said, first we're gonna drop the air tanks.
As you may have noticed, the, the plate that holds the air tanks on there has holes around the border for bolts to go up and they bolt through the frame. Well, there was only three of them on there. These ones are broken off. So I have easy access to this. I'll just slice that off, weld a new nut in there. So that will be an easy fix. And then all the new pieces that I put on here, they'll all get brand new nuts and everything. Um, and then I'll probably end up fixing that bracket, which should look like that. And maybe anything else I see. It's a nice thing about having someone, you know, a welder do this. And they see all those other little things and they kind of just catch all that stuff. All right, we're going to get the sucker cleaned up and start cutting our pieces. So that center was a little low, probably you know bent due to the the big old dents that were in there. So I just kind of rigged up strap on my crane. It didn't need very much; probably only needs like a couple hundred pounds, maybe if that. Just pulled up right there, and then pull up on it, tacked everything all the way around. So now when I let let off it, everything should stay in place. got the outside here all welded out now on these welds I'm not trying to make those look good I'm trying to build them up higher than this metal so that when I sand it down there are no low spots that's why you see tack welds and stuff on there because I'm trying to make sure it is high so when I sand it down I don't have to weld it more um, these welds I was trying to make look good and this weld try to make it look decent and again put the flat spot on it that way it kind of looks like a factory weld that they leave there and then we got our holes got our holes nuts welded on there um, looks like it's gonna rain so I'm trying to get this thing uh, done and painted a little bit before it rains so I'm trying to hurry which means I'm gonna not be able to film as much as I want but film as much as I can It's raining. 
just just didn't make it. So I'm not gonna blend this because I'm gonna have to sand all the rust or whatever off this thing. Probably try to come out tomorrow, bring it easy up, heat it all up with a torch. I'm really irritated. All right, well, I'm gonna clean up and get out of here. Um, bring you guys back tomorrow. All right, it's the next morning. Got clear skies, bunch of water. I did not finish blending this because I knew it was gonna rust. So now we're gonna use a torch to heat up, get all the water out of the cracks and everything. So we'll get this uh, heated up and then we'll, uh, we'll blend it out. All right, we got it all blended out pretty good. Now we're gonna get it painted. I'm gonna show you this one, but I'm not gonna film it. You can see what's kind of going on there. Um, pretty straightforward, just same thing, boom. Place the whole front piece. You gotta drop the tanks, all that, same thing. All right. All right, this one's done. So, can you see where I cut it? I did not go all the way to the end. I actually did it right there. So I did that piece. Um, well, that's it. That's three bumpers. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.